Hey everyone, Nick here with the Best Buy blog. Today we're talking about camera stabilizers. I'd like to talk to you about how they work, what's possible to achieve with them. I have three different models here. Uh, they're all by DJI, the RS3 Pro, RS3, and RS3 Mini. I'll look at the uh, differences between them and also the similarities. And at the end, I'd like to show you or at least give you an idea which of these models would be perfect for your needs. Let's get started. So a camera stabilizer or gimbal, as the name implies, will stabilize your camera body to help you achieve super smooth Hollywood-like results. The images you're looking at right now, I filmed with the RS3 Pro, the RS3, and the RS-C2, a former model in the DJI line. How this works is that the camera body is suspended on these uh, different arms that are supported by these motors that will actually compensate uh, for any movement uh, in the body. So this gives you a really rock solid result. What's interesting is that you can actually control these motors with a joystick so you can actually follow the subject easily with the joystick. Uh, in the past, only big productions had the budget to afford these tools. They were really expensive, but um, nowadays these, uh, these tools are quite affordable and we see them in very small productions and even in solo creators, uh, in the hands of solo creators, I should say. Uh, for vlogging, it's very interesting because you can easily pivot the camera from a self-facing direction and you can easily pivot 180 degrees to film what's in front of you. So vloggers have been really uh, integrating these tools into their arsenal to really enhance their results. So here are the three models in the RS3 gimbal line. They all share the same state-of-the-art up-to-date algorithm and it works really well for the best stability possible. The main model is the RS3 and it's really easy to use and uh, a great thing about it is that the calibration is as easy as it can be. DJI really um, you know, thought about this process and they actually use these plates that slide very well so they don't catch anywhere when you're trying to put the, uh, the camera into place and find that equilibrium point. And what's more is that there's actually fine tuning knobs so you can really move that camera around without having to unlock everything and it really speeds uh, things up. The controls are standard. There's a trigger which you hold down to keep the camera pointing where you want it uh, while you move around. And uh, if you double tap it, it's gonna center it back to the equilibrium point. A triple tap will turn it towards you and a triple tap, a second triple tap will turn it, will point it forward. On the back there's a joystick so you can actually manually control the gimbal and point it with your finger, point the camera with the finger and uh, there's a record button that enables recording on your camera via, via Bluetooth. Speaking of Bluetooth, you can connect a mobile device so you can monitor, monitor with your mobile device, you can control parameters such as shutter speed and aperture. And you can even actually control uh, the camera direction by tilting the phone, which is pretty interesting. This model, uh, it weighs 2.8 pounds and it will support up to 6.6. .6. So you're not just limited to small uh, lenses and compact uh, camera, uh, cameras. Uh, there's a wide variety of cameras that you can use and uh, you know if you're wondering if your camera is compatible with this I suggest you look up look your model up on DJI's website. They'll let you know if it's compatible uh, Last thing is that the battery life is um, Is estimated at 12 hours, which I think is pretty generous for all types of shoots if you're worried you can get a second one and you'll get up to 24 hour hours so this um, gimbal will uh, be powered more, uh, you know, it, <laughs> you'll, you'll fall asleep before it lacks any power. Uh, there's a few uh, accessories you can buy. There's a briefcase handle. Uh, this is a cool handle that kind of lets you film from underneath and uh, it's pretty comfortable because you get to use two arms and uh, it, it lessens the fatigue of using a tool like this. Uh, there's a focus motor that attaches to your lens and then you can use this uh, wheel here to manually focus. So if you're somebody that films while controlling the focus manually, that's something you, uh, you'll definitely enjoy. And uh, last but not least, there is a mount, that, a separate mount that you can buy to mount the camera in portrait mode. This is useful for people that do content for uh, social media, for example. 
So the next model in the RS3 line is the RS3 Mini. This is a compact, uh, lightweight gimbal. It only weighs 1.75 pounds. It's compact, so it only takes smaller body cameras and smaller lenses. Uh, it's, it's compatible with most compact bodies, but make sure that your equipment is compatible with this model by checking the DJI website. So this is a smaller gimbal. It has a smaller touchscreen. It's 1.4 inches compared to the 1.8 of the RS3 and RS3 Pro. It's not a big deal. It's still easy to use and you have enough space to click on the buttons with a single finger. Um, a cool thing about this gimbal is that out of the box, natively, you can put a camera on it in portrait mode. So being lightweight, having access to portrait mode right out of the box, I think that's uh, ideal for vloggers and social media content creators. I think that's what the you know target audience is for this um, for this gimbal, and I think they're gonna really love it because it's gonna you know take their content creation to a new level. One thing to note is that the battery life is 10 hours. It's a bit shorter than the other gimbals. I think 10 hours is general, you know, generous, uh, but if you're the type of person that just films the whole day and you expect to use and, uh, use and rely heavily on this gimbal, maybe get an extra battery or uh, you know, put some time aside uh, where you can recharge the batteries of this gimbal. A couple of differences with the RS3 is that the locks aren't automatic. Uh, this is a, a little detail, but it makes things uh, easier and faster when you want to put it away or put a camera back on it. It makes things faster. Uh, the thing I missed though is the quick knob adjustment when you calibrate it. I think the quick knob is just like so easy and intuitive to use and it makes you know find adjustments really easy. It's not present on this model, so you're gonna have to calibrate it really by sliding the plate uh, until you find that sweet spot. So the last model in the RS3 line is the RS3 Pro. It builds on the RS3 and adds really pro-oriented features. First of all, you'll notice that it's, a, that it's a much bigger device. It has a lot more space around the arm, so you can use bigger cameras and bigger lenses. It actually will support up to 10 pounds, so it's a much bigger payload. You can see that it's quite bigger. It, it takes up more volume. It's, it's pretty hefty, um, but it's not as heavy as it looks. It only weighs 3.3 pounds, and that's because it's made out of, uh, out of car carbon fiber. So these features they added, they're really uh, oriented towards professionals, all right? People that do this for a living. You can mount this uh, gimbal to a vehicle, for example. You can mount it to a jib. So it's very niche things that aren't usually accessible to most content creators, let's say. Uh, also, it's compatible with LiDAR, which is uh, very, very useful. Uh, it's a laser t uh, detection technology that you can use to really, really have precise focus. So again, these features are really aimed towards professional users that probably do this for a living. So it, it's a very interesting product, but you won't actually probably have access to a lot of these advantages unless you're a professional. Now, if you plan on exclusively filming vlog content, well, the RS3 Mini is for you. It's compact, lightweight, so you won't get tired when you use it, and it accepts most compact camera bodies sold on the market today. For instance, I'm using the Sony a7C with the stock lens, and that uh, compact full-frame body fits on the Mini, so no problem there. You can actually check compatibility to make sure that your rig is going to fit on the Mini on DJI's website. Now, if you plan on being present on different types of shoots from large, small, maybe film some vlogs, well, really the RS3, uh, the regular RS3 is the main product in the wrong line and you can't go wrong with that. It's just a rock solid product that accepts a wide variety of bodies and lenses and it's just it's just such a reliable product uh, it's going to produce great results now the pro i mentioned this in my full review when i did it it's more of a niche product it's aimed at a, a certain type of user that has a bigger body you can check which uh, bodies i'm talking about on the uh, dji website 
And for the user that wants to have access to more advanced features, such as the LiDAR, uh, LiDAR detection, that's going to help with autofocus tremendously. And, uh, but you need some uh, accessories, some separate accessories uh, to make that work. So it's really a niche product that will really interest only some uh, specific people. So I think the RS3 is the main product and if you plan on just vlogging and you want to keep things light, well the Mini is ideal. And if you're an advanced user, you have a bigger uh, camera, well the RS3 Pro is for you. Now if you want more information on any of these three products, uh, you can go read my full article on Best Buy's blog. My name is Nick, thank you so much for watching.